Okay, uh, continuing with recursion, we're going to look at how to use recursion to solve a maze. Um, this also involves um, what are called decision trees, where to solve a maze you have to, you're at some place and you have to decide where you want to go, so you have several decisions, and as you move, make a move in that direction and try a decision, uh, and you keep following that path, you may find it's the wrong path and have to backtrack in the maze to where you were. And so there's a, there's a whole bunch of problems that are similar to this in computer science and in fact in uh, uh, doing real things. So but we're going to look at an example of a maze. And so in a maze, um, of course, this is a maze. And you start out at some position, so here's a little red dot here and you want to get to this exit over here. So you want to find a path that gets to the exit, hopefully before you starve, if you happen to uh, be in that situation. So with turtle graphics, we're actually going to uh, actually draw as this solution is working in turtle graphics. Now, we wouldn't have to do that. We could just write the code to solve the maze and just print out the path to follow and give it as a map to the person, uh, turn left, go so far, turn right, and we could just do that. So we've chosen though, the author has chosen to actually draw the maze and also show you the progress of the turtle uh, solving the maze. You can actually see this algorithm work. And every time it recurses, you'll see this is when the turtle uh, gets to a place where it can't go any further and it has to back up to where it was and try another uh, decision. Now to simplify things, our maze is going to be a series of cells, so it's actually going to be on a grid where each cell is either a wall or it's open and then we'll have, we'll drop some dots in where we are to show uh, some progress we've made. So basic step to solve the maze, if you're a turtle, you're dropped somewhere in the maze. Uh, so every, so this is kind of the recursive solution where if you start back at one, you're recursing. Uh, so if first, if you're if you are outside the maze, you have succeeded. So that's the first thing you want to check. If you can't move in any direction, you have failed. So that means you you have failed to solve the maze, and there's nowhere to go. Uh, if you can move north to a square, then go there and recurse back to step one. So you've moved to a new position basically and recurse. Uh, if you can move south. Now, if that didn't work, uh, you want to move south to a square and try to go uh, uh, go from there. And if you can't do that, go back to step one. Uh, if, you've, if you can move that, then go to step one. If you can move to a west square uh, after you return, go there. And if you can move to an east square, then go there. So that's basically you're going to try each direction. And if you can move that direction, try that path. So that's the recursing part is trying a new path. Uh, there's one rule though, you cannot move to any place you have already been. So the way we're going to do this is by leaving a crumb, uh, which is a classic way of doing that. So here's the general code they have in the book. So we're going to have a, a method called search from and we have the maze, which is actually, the maze is actually a, a two-dimensional list. So it's a, a list of, of columns, and each column is a list of, of row items, and each item in the row is actually just a string uh, with a special character representing whether it's a wall, it's blank, and we'll see, see how that works. And then we're gonna, we have a starting, where we are, which is a start row and column, so as we start moving the turtle around, we'll be, move, we'll be changing these. So first we update the position. And what this is going to do in the code that we're doing, it's actually going to move the turtle to position that it's looking at. So you'll see when we run the maze, the turtle actually moves into a wall. Uh, a real turtle can't do that, but this is kind of the turtle imagining going to the next square, and he sees, oh, it's a wall, and then he's going to move back. Um, so this maze will, if it, if it, uh, if we hit an obstacle in these next steps, we're going to return a false. So next, it checks if the uh, current position we're at is an obstacle, and if it is, uh, it's going to return false. And then if it's, uh, if we've already tried this spot, or 
it's a dead end. A dead end is where we've actually failed um, and we've backed out of a path so it's we know that there's no choices from that path. Uh, so these are two markers we use. So if it's either of these, we return false. So we found a, a square that's basically been explored. Now if where we are is actually outside the maze, we're done. So this is exit checks, it returns true if we're outside the maze. And if we're outside the maze, what we're going to do is we're going to have the turtle back up to where it started by doing returns. So it's going to return true, meaning it succeeded. But as it backs up, it's going to update the position where it's backing up uh, and leave a, a color. In the version I have, I leave a little red, a little blue circle. And that's called part of the path. So when we're all done, we'll have a map that shows the path the turtle actually took to get out. Now finally, uh, these are like all the base cases that do something special. Uh, so if we, if uh, the square we're trying to move to is open, uh, then we're going to search from there. So we're basically going to call ourselves from this new position. So you can see, and this is a big OR, and it says it's going to use logical shortcuts. So what happens is it does search from the new position, and if this succeeds, the OR will be true, and it will skip down to ending the method. If this didn't succeed in this direction, it will uh, try the next direction. So because of the short circuiting, it only will try all four directions if they all failed. So if any of these succeed or if they all fail, it's going to come down here and if, if it found a solution, if this, any of these return true, it's going to update uh, part of the path and then start returning. So if it returned true, it, that only worked if it actually was outside the maze. So as it returns, it's going to be backing up and marking where the turtle was going backwards. If it failed, it's going to update position and say we're at a dead end and it's going to return. So it's going to be backing out of a failure and hopefully it's eventually going to get back to a point where it's got more decisions it hasn't tried. It's going to get back to uh, where it hasn't tried the other decisions from this uh, long statement here. And that's it. So now to set up the maze, we need to actually give it a maze to try. And this is the maze that's used in the book. And so there's an input file. It's called the maze2.txt file. And you actually type into the maze special characters. So the pluses mean these are walls. Where you have spaces, those are open spaces. Uh, this space here is how you get out of the maze. So that's the exit to the maze. And so everywhere there's spaces, you see paths. And then the S means where you want the turtle to start. start. And we're going we're gonna to basically, basically read, read these characters, characters into an uh, array, array, and we're going to use the plus, and we'll, let's show you that, we'll use these special characters. So we use the plus to indicate a wall, and a blank to indicate an empty cell, and as we drop breadcrumbs, we're going to drop breadcrumbs to say where we've been, that's that some place has been tried, we're going to uh, change the s space to a dot, and if we... Uh, if we have a, a cell where we can't move in any four directions and we have to backtrack, we mark that cell as a dead end. And uh, when we find a solution and we start backing the turtle out, we're going to mark the solution with all these O's, which will mark the part of the path. Uh, so the next part is how do you read a file? So we introduce that file. Now this code's a little different than the book. I added this line here. So let's go through it. So you open a file in Python, you just do this, and it returns an object. And uh, then you say for line and the name of that object, and what this is, is it, line will become a string representing each line in the file, including the new line characters at the end of each line. Now, new line characters vary depending on what kind of computer you're on. So for example, if you're on a Macintosh, new lines are just a, a backslash R, which is called a recurse turn. If you're on a PC, you get a backslash R and a backslash N. And if you're in Linux, you just get a backslash N. So what this does here, it takes a string and any characters it has in these arguments, it will strip it from the right side of the string. So this removes any invisible characters from our maze information. Uh, you can add, so that's that's what that does. And you need this if you just try the uh, author's code. It won't run correctly in either 
Linux or a uh, well, it may run Linux, but it will not run correctly on a Macintosh. I know that because it failed here. Um, so here we have uh, we're going to start a, a new row, and uh, then we're going to set column to zero, and then we're going to say for each character in the line. So we're going to march across the line, and we're going to be appending that character to the row. So we're building a a row, which is a list. If while we're doing this we see an S, that's our starting position, uh, we're actually inside of a class where we have some instance variables to store where we where we want the turtle to start. So we store those. Uh, we incre increment what column we are, and we have uh, what row we're on, which is rows and maze. So we increment that. And now once we've finished all the characters in a line, we append that line to a maze list, which is another list which is an instance of the class we're in. And so when the, we're all done with this loop, maze list will be basically a two-dimensional list. It'll be a list of rows where each row is a, uh, a list of individual characters. And finally, we store how many columns are in the maze here. So we end up with two important things, how many rows are in the maze and how many columns are in the maze when we're done. Here's our special characters. Uh, so be, let's actually see it works. Let me switch back to code before I cover this. So here's all the code. I'll let you explore. Uh, a lot of parts of it are just for doing all the drawing correctly. I have modified some things from the author's version to be a little friendlier. Uh, over here I've set it up so when it draws the maze you get a little white border around it. Uh, for example, I have the speed of drawing the maze increased but when I draw a, uh, a, a breadcrumb of any kind, I slow down before I draw it so you can see a little bit more of the turtle solving the maze. I have a simple maze, let me show it to you, it's called Maze 1. So it's a very small maze, so we can see it easily. So let's go ahead and run this version. First you're going to see it draw the maze. You see the turtle on fast speed drawing up the maze. Then the turtle's going to slow down. And you'll see when it slows down, it's going to move the turtle. And if it gets stuck, it's going to try all the directions. And if it runs out of directions, it's going to backtrack and mark the uh, dead ends as red. And then if it, uh, uh, so you'll see the breadcrumbs were one color, and the blue is the path it found out of the maze. So you can play it several times and, and see how it works with the code. And then once you understand the smaller version, you can try the larger version of the maze. And to do that, uh, just change the name of the file to maze2 and it'll read in the other version. So this type of problem uh, is basically you're given, at any step you have a, a several choices of path to take. And you move in the direction of that path until you, uh, you're presented with some other choices, and then you have a bunch of choices of, of another way to take. There's a lot of problems like this. Uh, so you can generalize this effect uh, and use the same kind of code to solve a lot of other problems. And recursion works really well here, is that uh, you recursively, uh, once you pick a, uh, one of the possible paths, you recurse in that direction. And then by returning, you're backtracking, uh, saying you either failed uh, so that would indicate failure, or you return a true, indicating you succeeded. Uh, you can use this for things like chess problems, checker problems. So it's possible to use this. For example, in checkers, you could have the computer use uh, this technique to figure out the optimal solution to what, uh, if it wanted to make a move, how to beat its component. It could try all the possible game scenarios to the end of a checkers game. And that's probably possible with today's uh, speedy computers. And it's really easy to do with Tic Tac. You could have it try all the possible combinations going forward uh, so it could pick the best solution for a tic-tac-toe application. You can also use it to find the best or the shortest solution to things. And we're going to see a, a problem like that soon. And when you return from uh, recursion, uh, we automatically backtrack. So that's the other nice thing is once you fail at a particular path you're trying, when it returns, it's eventually going to return back to the place where you have more open solutions you haven't tried. 